So now that we've computed um, the aggregate supply curve, we can look at its properties. And that's going to be pretty simple just because um, the aggregate supply curve is a, a, you know, a very uh, simple structure in the model. So um, you remember that the aggregate supply curve here, the AS curve, we said that um, here it only depends on uh, the market tightness. And you remember the definition, the aggregate supply curve is the, um, you know, given how many uh, services households want to, captures how many services households want to bring to the market and then takes a matching uh, structure into account, the matching function, and it's going to give us for any amount of tightness how many services are going to be sold, uh, you know, given how many services households want to bring and uh, the matching function. So here's the aggregate supply curve is just uh, y s of x is equal to f of x times k. Um, okay. Um, <clears throat> So that's what we had. Uh, that's what we established previously. And so what you can see is that given that k is a parameter, um, all the properties of the aggregate supply curve will just reflect the properties of f of x. Uh, so um, k, you remember that's just um, the capacity of each household, and therefore the aggregate capacity of the economy, how many services could be produced, and f of x is just the selling probability. It's a probability to sell one service given that it's brought um, to the market. And so here what we can see is that <coughs> um, the properties of uh, Ys of X, given that case of parameters, reflect those of F of X. And so here, you know, um, we can just summarize what the properties of the aggregate um, supply curves are going to be given that what we know about uh, f of x so for instance we know that when the market tightness is zero uh, which means that there are no buyers um, the probability to sell uh, is equal to zero and so f of x is zero and as a result the aggregate supply is going to be zero so where is of s at zero is zero and just just because f of zero is equal to zero another limit we can look at we know that when the tightness becomes infinite so that there are infinitely many buyers for each seller the probability to sell becomes one um, and so here as a result the aggregate supply uh, is going to assemble to k when the tightness uh, is infinite so that what supply to the market is actually the entire capacity of the economy. So the limit of ys of x when x goes to infinity is just going to be k. And that's because uh, the limit of f of x when x goes to infinity is 1, as we had established. So that's pretty simple. So we'll have an asymptote for the aggregate supply. So of course, another thing that we know is that uh, y f of x is going to be increasing in x and same reason that's uh, again because f of x is increasing in x so that's another useful property and the last property that we also know and that could be uh, useful is that y f of x is going to be concave in x because uh, again f of x as we had established is concave in x so these are all the properties that um, just come out from our uh, simple expression for the aggregate supply curve um, and then what we can do just as we had done for the aggregate demand curve that we can plot the aggregate supply curve so we can plot it uh, you know, in a, in a plane in which you have um, quantities and price, as we had done for the aggregate demand curve, and, and in another plane in which you have quantities and tightness. Uh, so let's look at the most interesting one, of course, it's to plot the aggregate demand curve 
uh, as a function of tightness. Uh, sorry, the aggregate supply curve. So here we're going to aggregate supply curve in a, uh, service tightness plane. Right, so on the x-axis, we just have uh, services sold and something that's of course, uh, and here we'll have the service, which we can denote by y, because these are services sold, and then we'll have tightness here, tightness x, here you have zero. All right, and so um, given what we know about the properties of fx, what we've just established, so we know that we'll have an asymptote here at k, Uh, we'll have our asymptote at k here for the aggregate demand. We know that at zero, when tightness is zero, the aggregate demand is just going to be zero. And then <coughs> we know that the aggregate demand is going to be increasing in x and concave in x, so it looks like a, it's going to look uh, something like this. Okay, and so this is just uh, y s of x. That's our aggregate supply. And uh, so a couple of things that we can represent here. So first of all, um, what we notice is that the aggregate supply curve is strictly less than the capacity. So here's this quantity here, the so gap between capacity and the aggregate supply. Uh, so this is just idle capacity, which is uh, the equivalent of uh, unemployment in, in our you know, one market model. Um, but so here you see very clearly idle capacity. And so that's because due to the matching structure, not all services that are provided um, supply to the market are going to be sold. Uh, so this on the other side of it, um, so these are services um, that are uh, sold at any amount uh, of tightness. So it's going to be measured as output in the economy. Okay, um, and <clears throat> it's interesting here is that if we go back to this discussion of measured productivity that we had when we introduced um, the matching function, you know, here if you want to measure productivity in the economy uh, as a residual, so you would look at the output in the economy, which is just what the aggregate supply gives. You would look at the amount of labor and capital in the economy, so that's exactly what K, uh, the productive um, capacity, gives here. So K, you remember that the capacity in the economy. And you know, you would look at <coughs> the gap between capacity in the economy and output, and you would say, well, any changes in the, um, the amount of output given that capacity is fixed, that has to, you know, that's going to be described as measured productivity. Uh, and so, of course, here, any changes in measure productivity uh, is going to uh, capture changes in f of x, uh, you know, the selling probability, uh, because here that's the only thing that moves when tightness moves. Um, so actually, this output here, given that capital and labor are fixed, this amount of services sold and output, that's actually proportional. Um, of course, it's proportional to uh, the selling probability. Uh, and but you know it would also uh, be proportional to measured productivity. Because here you're in a world in which um, lab, you know labor and capital are fixed, but output varies. And so if you were doing some kind of solo residual exercise, um, 
all the changes in uh, output, you would uh, ascribe them to a change in, in productivity. Uh, you know, just to, uh, to see that here's a model in which model pro module productivity will change endogenously when tightness changes. Um, okay, so, um, so this is a, a representation in a tightness, in a service tightness plane. And then, of course, just for completeness, we can do a representation in a price, uh, in a service price plane. And that's going to be uh, pretty simple. So we can have so we can have the price P. We can have services here. Um, so we know that our capacity K is still here. And but so here, because the aggregate supply doesn't depend on um, our price level at all, um, the aggregate supply would look something like this. And that's just um, y s of x, which is just strictly greater than k, but independent of p. Because here, independent of the price um, level, of the price of each service, households are just going to supply um, the same quantity. And you know, once more, this gap here that we see. Um, um, that's just a marker of idle capacity or slack that you have here. Uh, okay, um, and here of course uh, we have zero. But so here it's uh, perfectly inelastic in this uh, price uh, tightness uh, plane. 